If you're considering the actuarial career or maybe you already have your mind set on it, well, there are six different specializations that you can take your career in. Depending on what specialization you choose, there are going to be different actuarial exams that you have to take. But the good news is that when you're just starting, the exams are the same no matter which specialization you decide on later. So you don't have to make this decision right away. Honestly, most people don't choose their specialization voluntarily. They usually end up choosing their specialization based on what type of work they get their very first actuarial job. Job in. But after watching this video, if you have a strong desire to go into one of these specific specializations, then you're definitely going to want to take that into consideration when you plan your dream 10 list. And by the way, if you don't know what a dream 10 list is, then you're going to have to go watch this video when you're done watching this one. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their very first actuarial job. So let's get into this video. Three, two, one, go. Okay, these are in no particular order at all, but the first type of specialization that we're going to talk about is an individual life and annuity actuary. So these types of actuaries are typically dealing with insurance policies that last maybe even over 30 years. So these are usually long-term insurance policies or financial products. And they last so long because they are dependent on the life of an individual. So a life insurance actuary might be working with things like whole life insurance that lasts until someone dies. They might be working with term insurance, which only lasts for a a certain portion of time, maybe 10, 20 years, or they might even be dealing with joint life insurance policies where the policy covers two people under one policy. There are so many different types of life insurance policies that you can get, but no matter which one you're looking at, you can be very sure that an individual life actuary is involved with it. Now you can think of an annuity actuary as kind of the opposite of an individual life actuary because with individual life actuaries, they're working with insurance policies that pay when a person dies but an annuity actuary is working with annuities. And for those of you that don't know, an annuity is basically an ongoing payment, usually of the same amount that happens at the same time every single month or every single year. Think of it like your Netflix subscription. Every single month, you're paying the same amount to Netflix and you pay it on the exact same day. That continues until you cancel your account. The insurance company pays the same amount to the individual every single month or year, and it happens at the same time every single period. So with these types of actuaries, they're working with policies that pay until a person dies usually, whereas an individual life actuary is working with policies that pay when a person dies. So they are kind of opposite, but they're all covered under the same type of actuary. So for this type of specialization, for someone that is fully qualified as an actuary and has been working for 15 years, you would expect them to be making somewhere around $180,000 per year, according to the DW Simpson salary survey. And that doesn't include any bonus. Okay, so the second type of actuary that we're going to talk about is the retirement actuary. So this type of actuary is typically working with pensions. And a pension is basically an ongoing stream of money that will be paid to someone after they retire from working. You can think of a pension kind of like an annuity because it usually pays a certain amount at a certain time period, maybe every month or every two months, maybe every quarter. It's different for every pension plan. But for these types of annuities, we do not know when the individual is going to die, but it typically starts around retirement. So there are so many ways that pension plans can be set up, but typically an employer is paying into a pot of money and the individual is paying into a pot of money. And upon retirement, that big pot of money is used to purchase an annuity that will then pay them at those regular intervals every single month. There are lots of rules and regulations around pension plans. So a pension or retirement actuary has to be really familiar with those. And as more and more companies are moving to pension plan structures that are less risky, the retirement actuary is becoming less and less in demand, but will never go away completely. Now, the DW Simpson salary survey didn't have any specific salary amounts for retirement actuaries, but we can assume that it's going to be about the same, around $180,000 per year for someone with 15 years of experience and that is fully qualified. You're going to notice as we go through these that the salaries, depending on the different specializations, aren't incredibly different. Okay, so the third specialization that we're going to talk about today is the group and health actuary. Actuary. So these types of actuaries are typically working with insurance policies that cover health costs for a group of individuals. So for example, the company that you work for right now might provide you with things like dental and health benefits. If that's the case, then the company that you work for has gone and purchased a group insurance policy from an insurance company. And you can be sure that a group and health actuary is involved with that. The type of work that these types of actuaries do is a little bit different than what an individual life insurance actuary would do 
do because rather than dealing with one specific person on a policy, you're dealing with a group of individuals. It could be five people, could be 10, could be 20, could be hundreds. But the thing is in these groups, each individual will have different characteristics. Some of them might be smokers, some won't. Some might have existing health conditions, some won't. So with these types of actuaries, you have to consider the group as a whole rather than each individual person within that group, especially since new employees are coming and going all the time in these types of policies. So an actuary that's fully qualified with 15 years of experience in this type of work will probably be making around $190,000 per year, according to the DW Simpson salary survey, and that is without any bonuses. By the way, if this video has been helpful so far, could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know? And also so that it spreads to more future actuaries that need to know these specializations. Thank you so, so much. Okay, now let's get into the fourth specialization, and this is the quantitative finance and investment actuary. Now, if you've watched my previous video right here about how insurance companies make money, then you'll know that insurance companies rely on investing premiums that they earn from insurance policies into different assets in order to earn interest. So a QFI actuary will probably work in the investments department of an insurance company making these investments. They'll be responsible for managing the portfolio of assets that the company owns and ensuring that the company has enough money to pay future claims and expenses. And actually a member of our actuary accelerator community recently got a job at New York Life in the finance department. So he would be considered this type of actuary, a QFI actuary. Now, since investments can be risky, this type of actuary has to conclude whether it's the best option for the insurance company to invest in higher yielding assets that are more risky or lower yielding assets that are less risky. They take lots of different factors into consideration because a lot of money is on the line. It could be billions of dollars. For this type of actuary, there's no information on the DW Simpson salary survey about exactly how much they would expect to make. But again, I'd expect it to be somewhere between 180 and $190,000 per year for a fully qualified quantitative finance and investment actuary and with 15 years of experience. So the fifth type of actuary that we're gonna talk about today is the corporate finance and ERM or enterprise risk management actuary. Now these types of actuaries can work in insurance companies, but since there are so many other businesses out there that are exposed to different types of risks, these types of actuaries might be working in many different types of fields and businesses. Their job is essentially to analyze a business's strategies, their financial statements and stuff like that to determine what potential risks the company has in the future. And they'll also help that company figure out what they can do to mitigate those risks or reduce the chances of them actually happening. And if they did happen, help them reduce the financial impact of them. For example, some companies like let's say travel companies, for example, took a big hit over the last couple of years during the pandemic. Many people weren't allowed to travel anymore or they were scared to travel. So travel companies didn't make as much money as they would have been anticipating making. If those travel companies had these types of actuaries, corporate finance and ERM actuaries, then those actuaries would have helped them to be able to see the possibility of a pandemic happening, figure out how much it would impact their business and also what they could do to reduce the financial impact of the pandemic on the business. A lot of the time insurance is used to mitigate these types of risks for companies, but there are other things that could be implemented like different processes and procedures that might also help to mitigate the financial impact or even the chances of these risks occurring. These types of actuaries will also be spending a lot of time looking at different scenarios that could happen and determining different and unique creative ways that the companies that they work for could mitigate and reduce those chances of the events happening, especially if multiple of those events are happening at the exact same time. Now, again, there's no information on the DW Simpson salary survey for this particular type of actuary, but again, I'm guessing between 180, $190,000 per year with 15 years of experience and fully qualified. Okay, so the sixth specialization that we're going to talk about today is the property and casualty actuary. Now, up until now, we've really just talked about individuals and risks that businesses have, but there's also this whole other side of insurance for property insurance, things like your vehicle, your house. Well, these are the types of things that a PNC insurance actuary will work with. An actuary accelerator community member recently got a job at Farmers Insurance in LA, where they'll be dealing specifically with property insurance for farmers. So things like 
like tractors and stuff like that. Now, typically these types of policies are much shorter term, maybe six months to a year long. We talked about earlier the life insurance actuaries dealing with policies that are 30 years long or more. So there is a big difference there because a life insurance actuary is going to have to be figuring out premiums that are going to be appropriate for years and years and years into the future, whereas a PNC actuary has to just worry about a very short term and then they can create new premiums for the next term. But no matter what type of insurance you're dealing with, the overall concepts are fairly similar from one specialization to another. So no matter what specialization you get into, it doesn't necessarily mean you are stuck in that one specialization forever. There is opportunity to move between them, especially if you're still early on in your career. So according to the DW Simpson salary survey, this type of actuary, a PNC actuary, will make about $180,000 per year if they are fully qualified with 15 years of experience. Okay, so let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about these different types of specializations. I will make sure to read and answer every single comment. I actually ended up specializing in the life and annuity insurance track, but actually the ERM and investment option sounds more interesting to me now, looking back at it. So now if you are like most future actuaries, you probably love learning about actuary salaries and how much you could actually make in this career. So if that's you, make sure you go watch this video next, where you can learn how you could be making over $7 million over the lifetime in your actuarial career. Really, it's a very insightful video that's probably going to light a little fire under your butt if you haven't started on your actuarial career already. So go check that one out next and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.